was adopted in 1950 and uh, raised in an Italian family. I joined the service, I was 26 years old. I had several siblings over in Vietnam and I had been 4F. 4F, like it put, means they would take my mother before they would take me. Uh, kind of had a doctor, a couple of guys he claimed were 4F, and I said, uh, bet selects or should like to check them out. And he goes, uh, what do you want, John? And I said, Ian. So I got in the service. John Caviani enlisted in the Army in 1968, although he was initially turned away because of an allergy to bee stings. The young soldier eventually qualified for the elite Special Forces and was sent to Vietnam in 1970. Once there, he forged a special bond with the South Vietnamese people. I had a some Vietnamese sergeant major with me, and uh, he uh, was shot and mortally wounded on an operation with me, a MedCap operation and asked if I'd adopt his son. His, and I was very close with him and his son in my town. And uh, so I ended up having to build an orphanage around my son, done in Nong Son. I had seven monks and about 22 kids. And I continued running medcaps. Went back to Nong Son and I was gonna go down and see my son, getting ready for the holidays. And everybody said, no, you don't wanna go down there. Went down there, my son was dead, and my kids were killed. The monks, six of them were killed. I said, tell Boxy John to stay out of the area. So apparently I was fairly successful at winning the hearts and minds, but, you know, lost my son in the orphanage. So I, it was, it was smarter for me to go to a different unit. In the summer of 1971, still reeling from the loss of his adopted son, Sergeant Caviani took an assignment to lead a mixed platoon of American soldiers and native Mountain Yard troops whom he affectionately referred to as his little people. Together, the men were deployed to a dangerous radio relay site located deep within enemy-held territory. So I went out there, our primary mission was to uh make sure the communications could be made from Laos, North Vietnam, through our relay site and into, uh, down into the headquarters. I got up there and the camp was a disaster area. So I fixed the camp up, reinforced all the wire and all the accesses, mined it and everything else. And we were starting to see more and more and more activity from the North Vietnamese. And of course I reported down to my unit and they had come back and say, our assets don't tell us anything like that. They continued questioning any reports that we were sending in, and we were seeing a thousand guys a day, and rucksacks, and I had helicopters, and they still didn't want to believe it. I decided, well, I know we're going to get hit. And sure as heck, we got surrounded, and I looked out into the perimeter, and there were Chinese Claymore mines sitting all the way around the camp. Well, I grabbed a machine gun and I would flip the weapon over the side of the berm and then shoot him up. I continued going around the camp doing this all the way around and destroyed all the mines. Next thing I know is the enemy flips up all their bunkers from the ground, all their Charlie holes as we call them, and start firing at us. If I'm covering all the guys, I've got a 50 caliber machine gun and start shooting up the positions, managed to get all my people back into the camp, all my, all my one wounded. We ended up quieting all the guns, and then uh, all of a sudden they started uh, rockets, you know, we're counter-battering them, shooting back at them. I realized I'm gonna lose the camp. I've got to destroy all the sensitive equipment that we have out there, so I set all my thermites off and oxygen. Burned all the equipment up, and I said, well, I'm going to start evacuating guys. Sergeant Caviani directed his remaining troops to a helipad, where he provided covering fire, enabling three extraction helicopters to land and evacuate the majority of his endangered platoon. As night began to fall, 
Caviani defied orders to evacuate himself, opting instead to stay behind with the small group of Montagnards who remained on the ground. I'd already been ordered, get off the hill, take your people, get out of there, leave the mountain yards. Like, <laughs> you gotta be friggin' joking with me. I was a reconnaissance team leader before, and the first man on the ground, last man off the ground. I thought, I'm sorry, I'm not obeying that order. When you come pick up all my little people, then you'll see me on a helicopter. So I started strengthening up all our defenses that we had at least half of the camp. And then I snuck up with one of my mountain yards and we planted a, a 106 round, set it up, booby-trapped it. So when they tried to make this one breach in the wall, then whoever was on it did it kill. That went off and the first attack wave was all killed. So I told my yards, pull back. We had a helipad in between the two ends of the camp and we, I set up on one side of it. And then one of my other yards set up one under the other outhouse. And we had the enemy in a crossfire. We just annihilated them. And they never knew what hit them. We hadn't had anything happen in about three quarters of an hour. And I said, they're getting ready to hit us big. So I pulled my mountain yards back. And I told them, we'll move out. And uh, about that time, uh, just, I mean, the whole world come running off of that end. I grabbed the machine gun, got up on the bunker, and, and started shooting at anybody trying to come in. My mountain yards were starting to take off down the backside of the hill. And uh, all of a sudden, I got a sanity attack, I think, because I said, what the hell are you doing up here? I turned around, bent over to start to get off, and I took a bullet up through the back and stopped just short of my neck and, and uh, threw my butt off the bunker while Mutt and I come running over and they're going to help me get back. I told them, no, get out of here. And I went and crawled in the bunker. About that time, they overran the whole top of the hill. We were kind of trapped in there, and, and next thing I know, a grenade comes rolling in. It was one of ours, and I kicked it up against the radio, and it went off and took out my radio, so that was the last time anybody heard from me. I decided to play dead, and I remember looking out and my feet sitting out like that, and there's a guy sitting on the cot, feet hanging down, he's got my boot going like this, checking it out. And uh, I guess he figured they were too big, and he figured I got killed when the round came through. And he got up and walked out. And uh, sobered me up real fast. I did a nice neat little low crawl to the door and out the side and over the berm and out through the, and started escaping and evading. Unarmed, badly wounded, and completely alone, Sergeant Caviani traveled through the countryside for 11 days before being captured by North Vietnamese troops and taken to a POW camp where he remained for 23 months. Caviani was still considered missing in action when his Medal of Honor was awarded in 1973. He was repatriated later that year and returned to America, where he received the Medal of Honor from President Gerald Ford. People ask me what I got the Medal of Honor for. I tell them I couldn't my run in my head to find them, and I leave it there. I was just doing my job. I figured you'd put any one of my guys in that position. We all felt the same way about the mountain yards. And many a time I had put my life on the line for my mountain yard, and I've had a number of them and died for me. So, it's reciprocal.